Hello friends, welcome back to Akida. Uh, let us continue with the problematic part of the chapter Shear Strength. Now, first read the question. A field vein shear testing instrument. So that means this question is related to the vein shear test. So it is given as it is having a diameter of 50 mm. So for the vein shear test, the diameter is given as 50 mm and the height of the shear, uh, vein shear is given as 100 mm. Was inserted completely into a deposit of soft to saturated silty clay. So if you see in the question itself, we can understand it is completely inserted. That means both top on and bottom surfaces are in contact with the soil. Okay. With the vein rod vertically such that the top of the blades were 500 mm below the ground surface. Upon the application of rapidly increasing torque about the vein rod, the soil was found to fail when the torque of so the soil is going to be failed at after application of torque of 5.2 Newton meter. So what they are asking? Assuming the mobilization of untrained shear strength of all shear strength on all failure surfaces to be uniform and the surface resistance is mobilized on the surface of the vein rod to be negligible. So here it is nothing but from here to here they have indirectly given that assumptions those are considered while deriving the equation of the vein shear test. So they are asking about the untrained shear strength of the soil. So if you remember, what about the shear strength C plus sigma tan phi as you are talking about clay type soil, your phi is equal to zero. That means your undrained shear strength is nothing but a undrained cohesion. So what is the relationship between the undrained cohesion and the torsion or torque? That is nothing but a T. We can express it as Cu into pi into d square h divided by 2 plus d cube by 6. So here uh, there is one more term we have to either it may be a 6 or it may be a 12. If only one surface is in contact then we have to use 12. If both top and bottom is in contact then we are using the 6. That's it. What is the unknown parameter? Only you have to find out the Cu. Now uh, substitute in this equation. Now if I so if I take here 5.2 that will be equal to Cu into pi. So here I am substituting my T value in Newton meter. So that's why I substitute all the values in either in mm. So D if I substitute in mm, so I can express it 50 into 10 power minus 3 whole square into what about the height 100 into 10 power minus 2 divided by 2 plus d cube diameter cube that means 50 into 10 power minus 3 whole cube divided by 6 then if you solve this we will get the undrained cohesion that is what nothing but your undrained shear strength of the soil given so if you solve this we will get this value is around 11.35 into 10 cube newton per meter square so if they ask us to express this value in terms of the kilopascal, then we will express this as 11.35 kilopascal. So this is also a direct formula oriented question, even though it's look very bit lengthier, but the solution is very much easy. Right? Now move on to the next question. Now let us concentrate here. What is the given question? A sample of sandy silt when subjected to a drained triaxial test. Fail at major minor principal stresses of 120 and 50 kilopascals respectively. At what value of deviator stress would another sample of the same soil fail if it is subjected to a confined pressure of 75 kilopascal? So, what is the type of the soil they are going to conduct the experiment? Sandy silt. And uh, what is the type of the experiment? It is nothing but a drained triaxial test. So sandy silt and drained triaxial test. So what do you think of any parameters are equal to zero? 
effective cohesion is equal to zero if it is of sandy silt and uh, sandy silt means what is the major portion of the soil sand as it is under dry and triaxial test what about your effective cohesion is equal to the zero and what it is obtained major and minor principal stresses as we are talking about the drained values that means we are talking about the effective values so what is the value is given effective minor principal stress is obtained as 50 kilopascal and effective major stress is obtained as 120 kilopascal now what is happening at what value of deviator stress that means the same sample is given but what they have done in that they have obtained the confined pressure or minor principal stress as 75 kilopascal if so they are asking what is the deviator stress such that the failure given to be happen that means if i uh, write down the equation in terms of the effective parameters so we can write it down that sigma 1 dash yeah, how can i find out sigma d dash if i know that is what nothing but a sigma 1 dash minus sigma 3 dash if i can able to find out sigma 1 dash then only i can able to find out the deviatrix stress so if i write down the relation sigma 1 dash that is nothing but a sigma 3 dash into tan square of 45 plus phi dash by 2 plus 2 c dash whatever the c dash 0 even if i write down the same formula again that i will substitute as equal to 0 so sigma 3 i know so if i can find out the phi dash then only we can obtain the sigma 1 dash and then only we can find out the deviatrix stress then how can I find the phi dash? So for that, they have referentially they have given these two values. So apply the values in this equation. Sigma 1 dash is given as 120. That will be equal to sigma 3 dash 50 into tan square of 45 plus phi by 2. So with this value, is there any need of finding phi dash? Why? Because our motive is to find sigma 1 dash in this case. So if I can find directly find out this value. How much that will be? Nothing but a 120 by 15. Just substitute the value here. That will be nothing but a sigma 3 dash 75 into whatever this magnitude 120 by 50. Then if we solve this, we'll get this value is around 180 kilopascal. Now, what about the solution? My deviatrix stress that will be equal to major stress is nothing but a 180 minus minor stress 75. So the correct option is nothing but a 105 kilopascal. So they have given two reference values. Why? Because one based on that we can find out the effective, and based on that we can find out the another failure point. Okay, now move on to the next. Read this question. A sample of dense sand. Now we are talking about the dense sand. In a triaxial CD test. So if it is a sand, dense sand to CD test, if you recall, for a dense sand in a consolidated and dry test, our reflective cohesion is equal to the zero. Okay. First, let us continue with the question. Failed along a well-defined failure plane at an angle of 66 degrees with respect to the horizontal. That means what they have given? They have given the alpha f that will be equal to the 66 degrees so how can i express it that is what nothing but 45 plus as it is a drying i am using the effective values 45 plus phi dash by 2 equal to 66 right then what will be my phi dash value 66 minus 45 that is around 20 1 21 into 2 so 42 degrees okay let us continue with it Find the effective confining pressure of the test. So here we have to find the confining pressure, effective confining pressure. That is what nothing but indirectly we have to find out the sigma 3 dash of the test if principal stress difference is 100 mega pascal. So what they are given, they are given that sigma 1 dash minus sigma 3 dash. This is given as how much? 100 kilo pascal. Then how can you continue with this? Again, let us write down the equation that is sigma 1 dash that will be equal to sigma 3 dash into tan square of 45 plus 5 by 2. Instead, I will represent it as alpha f plus 2c dash, whatever the c dash value is 0. 
even if i write down this entire equation again that magnitude is equal to 0 sigma 1 sigma 3 dash now from this what i can say sigma 1 dash that will be equal to tan square of alpha f that means uh, tan of alpha f 66 tan alpha f whole square then if you solve this will that magnitude is around 5.04 into sigma 3 dash that's it now substitute this value in this equation then how much you will get it in the place of sigma 1 dash substitute this value so how much you will get 5.04 sigma 3 dash minus sigma 3 dash how much you will get 5.04 minus 1 that means 4.04 sigma 3 dash that will be equal to 100 kilo pascal then if you solve this will get your effective confining pressure or effective minor principal stress will obtain it as around 24.75 kilo pascal right now move on to the next question now first read the question what is the given data compute the shearing resistance along a horizontal plane so we what we have to find we have to find the shear resistance along a plane at a depth of 6.1 meter in a deposit of sand let us assume there is a sand deposit and whatever the depth here the depth of the sand deposit they have mentioned it as 6.1 meters okay fine the water table is at a depth of 2.13 meter okay let us represent there is a water table this is at a distance of 2.13 meter okay fine the unit weight of the moist sand above water table so above the water table whatever the gamma given 18.54 the saturated unit weight so below the water table what is the saturated given 20.11 assume that sand is drained freely so they are talking about the sand is drained freely that means whatever the water they can drain freely and drained friction angle for the wet sand they have given whatever the drained friction that means they are given the effective values that is what nothing but a 32 degrees what we have to find we have to find out the shearing resistance how can i find the shearing resistance my shearing resistance is as we are talking about the drained values that means we have to talk about the effective parameters that means s will be equal to c dash plus uh, normal stress dash tan phi dash now as we are talking about the sandy soil for sandy soil what about the cohesion value zero that implies what will be my shear resistance that is what nothing but a normal stress effect to normal stress into tan phi dash phi dash is given how much 30 degrees then what you have to find we have to find out the effective normal stress at the bottom of this point what will be your effective normal stress that will be equal to until 2.13 what is the effective stress 2.13 into 18.54 plus whatever the remaining distance 6.1 minus 2.13 then this value is around 3.97 so 3.97 into uh, as we are talking about the effective value gamma saturation minus gamma w gamma saturation is 20.11 minus gamma w they are asking us to consider 10 then if you solve this we will get this value is around 79.63 kilo pascal now substitute in the given equation that is what about my shear strength that will be equal to sigma n dash normal stress 79.63 into tan of whatever the effective friction that is given as 32 so whatever the shearing resistance if you solve this we will get this around 49.76 kilo pascal so this is what nothing but a shearing resistance of the soil sample i think we have discussed all of the possible models based on the theory whatever we have discussed okay in the next video uh, let us uh, discuss the problem related to the pore water pressure uh, symptoms pore water pressure parameters we have seen direct shear problems we have seen unconfined compression test we have seen triaxial test and also we have seen the vein shear test right only the thing is that uh, the there are major equations that you have to buy hard and depending upon the type of the test under type of the soil 
there are some parameters that either cohesion is equal to zero or effective stress is equal to zero that you have to understand okay in the next video uh, we'll solve a problem based on this chemtons pore water pressure parameter thank you